is starting to die. But all of these, these are gonna be seeds. We're gonna sprinkle them. Such an amazing smell. It's definitely a great bug repellent. <laughs> I wanna go walk over really quick and look at my shiitake mushrooms. Um, they're not growing, but I can show you at least uh, an update, which it's not really an update, but I can still show you how we did our shiitake mushrooms this year. Um, there's a video that I put out and so far, the wax is holding up. So this was a oak tree that my husband cut down and we took some of the branches and I plugged them with the shiitake mushroom plugs. And then I coated them with some of our, some of our beeswax along with some of the beeswax that they, that they also uh, came with. I do anticipate growing a lot of mushrooms as well as freeze drying them. That is my, that is my goal this year. I want to freeze dry as many mushrooms as possible. I had, I had really good luck between the lion's mane and the chicken of the woods and preserving them for when I need them. I gathered all of our food grade five gallon buckets and I washed them. I wiped them down with some rubbing alcohol. I don't know if that's exactly what I need to do with these. However, I do know that when we're doing anything with oyster mushrooms, we do have to sterilize the bucket or get it as clean as possible. And so I figured we're gonna try this. Now, a few years back, I spread morel mushroom spores up on top of our hillside, thinking that it was a good place to do it. I think I was wrong because actually, I, I think what had happened was over the year or two, the rain actually brought the spores down to the creek and I was able to find some morel mushrooms down in like the nice sandy soil on the creek. I'll put that video, there's a few videos. It's been a long time since I've been doing YouTube so I'll have to try to find them. Uh, but I ordered some morel mushroom spores from Froggy Farms and basically the what I'm supposed to do is actually it came with a little card so some morel mushrooms um, it says mix a bag in five gallons of non chlorinated water filtered or, or rainwater I have well water so I think we're fine let it set for 24 hours then pour in a good growing area they grow great under sycamore poplar ash old apple trees they also grow in damp areas if the conditions are right they should come in one to two springs now i'm going to be here for as many years as i possibly can um so <laughs> i ordered a good bit of little ziploc baggies i think i have five of them one two three yes four five and I gave, I gave some away as well um, because I was really excited. But yeah, let's, let's get this poured in these buckets so that tomorrow we can go spread these spores. bring my camera <laughs> lens cleaner. Oh, that's bad. Okay, it's not that bad. Oh, it's not, okay, it's not that bad. So I didn't fill them all the way up because I'm gonna be driving them in the back of the side-by-side -side and I don't wanna lose any of the spores. Um, so I think this is gonna be just fine. I left, well, maybe I need to put a little bit more water in that one, but I'm excited. 
I do plan on putting them in the garage overnight um, just because I don't want the dogs to accidentally drink the buckets of morel mushroom spore water or my cat who is watching me so patiently. What doing? What doing, girl? Hi, you're so pretty. Yeah. We're gonna come back in about 24 hours and go spread some morel mushroom spores. Four hours since I set up these morale mushroom spores in some water. Now I'm gonna go load them up and let's go pick a good spot for them. I don't want any of it to slosh out, so I gotta go slow. I wanted to put it a little bit further back, um, but I wanted to try my luck at putting some of the spores underneath of the sycamore tree. I do have another sycamore tree over there. Uh, you know what? I might do, I'm gonna move it just in case. Just, yeah. We don't have too many poplars here on our, our property. I know poplar, my experience with morel mushroom hunting, I always find them near poplar. We have a lot more um, oak, walnut, but we do have a good bit of sycamore and I can see a very big American sycamore right there. You see how it's kind of white right up on top? That is an American sycamore. So I'm gonna go spread them. I'm gonna go spread a good bit underneath of that. This part of the property actually does stay, the ground does stay pretty damp, um, which is what I'm looking for. Finding a fern is always a really good sign, especially when you are looking for soil that is specifically um, good for, for harboring moisture. When I started taking my kids out and exploring and foraging and, and just teaching them basic survival skills, one of the first plants that I always encourage them to look for was fern. If you find fern, that means that typically you're near a, a source of water, which right down, that's where our creek is. So that makes me kind of excited about being able to put them here. Let's go check this out. I think I think this is where, right here. Yep, I think this is where we're gonna do it. And look, there's a little fern right there. And this tree right here is a sycamore. The other thing that I will add is my experience finding morel mushrooms, I tend to find them on the side of a hill where the the sun is setting. So not so much like the morning sun, more of the evening sun. And obviously right now you can see that it's quite open, but this side does, this side does get some evening sun. So I think this is our spot. Let's get them in the ground. Bye. 
gosh, yes. Oh, good. The only thing I did not bring is a rake. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of rough up some of these leaves. <sighs> okay, just kidding. in my eye. long time ago when my husband and I had our babies now I mean they're still my babies but they're they're bigger than me now so it's a little different but when our kids were gosh walking we would go morel mushroom hunting and um, they were perfect at it and the reason why is because to me I'm standing I see brush but our kids were perfect because this this was their view and they could see all of the mushrooms compared to me who was standing up and looking at the brush if you have grandchildren or you have children yourself take a mushroom hunting it is it's it's like the ultimate easter egg hunt yeah I've decided that I'm gonna pour all of the buckets here, um, just kind of in a nice little area around the sycamore tree. I was debating on putting them in another location, but what I think I'm gonna do is see how these do, and then maybe get some more spores. We're supposed to get a couple of days of rain, so I figured I will go ahead and cover them up with uh, leaves, even if these spores do try to migrate a little bit further down. I'm okay with it because I know that there are a handful of sycamore trees right down there. It's starting to get a little bit dark and the battery on my camera is dead. I spread five buckets of morel mushroom spores off into the woods underneath the sycamore tree. And well, I'm gonna keep you guys posted. It could be this spring, it could be next spring, it could be this coming fall, we will see. I'll definitely make sure to share with you guys when we find some morel mushrooms. So thank you guys for coming on this couple of day adventure with me. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.